I was just passing the time of day with old Troy of the DMP at the corner of Arbor Hill there, and be damned, but a bloody sweep came along, and he near drove his gear into my eye. I turned around to let him have the weight of my tongue, and who should I see dodging along Stony Batter only Joe Hines? Hello, Joe, says I, how are you blowing? Did you see that bloody chimney sweep near shove my eye out with his brush? Such luck, says Joe. Who's the old bollocks you were talking to? Old Troy, says I, was in the force. I'm on two minds not to give that fellow in charge for obstructing the thoroughfare with his brooms and ladders. What are you doing round those parts? says Joe. Devil a much, says I. There's a bloody big foxy thief beyond by the garrison church at the corner of the chicken lane. Old Troy was just giving me a wrinkle about him. Lifted any god's quantity of tea and sugar to pay three bob a week. Said he had a farm in the county down off a of hoppermate home by the name of Moses Herzog over there near Hatesbury Street. Circumcised, says Joe. Aye, says I, a bit off that top. An old plumber named Garrity. I'm hanging on to his taw now for the past fortnight, and I can't get a penny out of him. That delay you're on now, says Joe. Aye, says I. How are the mighty fallen? Collector of bad and doubtful debts. But that's the most notorious bloody robber you'd meet in a day's walk. And the face on him, all pockmarks, would hold a shower of rain. Tell him, says he, I dare him, says he, and I double dare him to send you round here again, or if he does, says he, I'll have him summoned up before the court, so will I, for trading without a licence. And he, after stuffing himself till his fit a burst, Jesus, I had to laugh at the little Jewy getting his shirt out. He drink me my teas, he eat me my sugars, because he no pay me my monies. For non-perishable goods, bought of Moses Herzog of 13 St. Kevin's Parade, Wood Key Ward, Merchant, hereinafter called the Vendor, and sold and delivered to Michael E. Geraghty, Esquire, of 29 Arbor Hill in the city of Dublin, Aaron Key Ward, Gentleman, hereinafter called the Purchaser. Be dedicated to five pounds of our dupois of first choice tea at three shillings per pound of our dupois, and three stone of our dupois of sugar, crushed crystal at three pence per pound of our dupois, the said purchaser debtor to the said vendor of one pound five shillings and six pence sterling for value received, which amount shall be paid by said purchaser to said vendor in weekly installments every seven calendar days of three shillings and no pence sterling. And the said non-perishable goods shall not be pawned or pledged or sold or otherwise alienated by the said purchaser, but shall be and remain and be held to be the sole and exclusive property of the said vendor to be disposed of at his good will and pleasure until the said amount shall have been duly paid by the said purchaser to the said vendor in the manner herein set forth as this day hereby agreed between the said vendor, his heirs, successors, trustees and assigns of the one part and the said purchaser, his heirs, successors, trustees and assigns of the other part. Are you a strict T.T.? says Joe. Not taking anything between drinks, says I. What about paying our respects to our friend, says Joe. Who, says I? Sure he's in John of God's off his head, poor man. Drinking his own stuff, says Joe. Aye, says I. Whiskey and water on the brain. Come around to Barney Cannon, says Joe. I want to see the citizen. Barney Mavurnings be it, says I. Anything strange or wonderful, Joe? Not a word, says Joe. I was up at that meeting in the city arms. What was that, Joe? says I. Cattle traders, says Joe. About the foot and milk disease. I want to give the citizen a hard word about it. So we went around by the linen hall barracks and the back of the courthouse, talking of one thing or another. Decent fellow, Joe, when he has it. But you like that, he never has it. Jesus, I couldn't get over that bloody foxy Garrity, that daylight robber, for trading without a license, says he. In Inish Foil the fair there lies a land, the land of holy Mikan. There rises a watchtower beheld of men afar. There sleep the mighty dead as in life they slept, warriors and princes of high renown. A pleasant land it is, in sooth of murmuring waters, 
fishful streams where sport the gunnard, the place, the roach, the halibut, the jibbed haddock, the grilse, the dab, the brill, the flounder, the mixed coarse fish generally, and other denizens of the aqueous kingdom too numerous to be enumerated. In the mild breezes of the west and of the east, the lofty trees wave in different directions their first-class foliage, the wafty sycamore, the Lebanonian cedar, the exalted plane tree, the eugenic eucalyptus, and other ornaments of the arboreal world with which that region is thoroughly well supplied. Lovely maidens sit in close proximity to the roots of the lovely trees, singing the most lovely songs while they play with all kinds of lovely objects, as, for example, golden ingots, silvery fishes, crans of herrings, draughts of eels, codlings, creels of fingerlings, purple sea-gems, and playful insects. And heroes voyage from afar to woo them, from Eblana to Sleeve Margi, the peerless princes of unfettered Munster and of Connacht the Just, and of smooth, sleek Linster, and of Crochen's land, and of Armagh the Splendid, and of the noble district of Boyle, princes, the sons of kings. And there rises a shining palace, whose crystal glittering roof is seen by mariners who traverse the extensive sea in barks built expressly for that purpose, and thither come all herds and fatlings and first fruits of that land, for O'Connell Fitzsimon takes toll of them, a chieftain, descended from chieftains. Thither the extremely large wains bring foison of the fields, flaskets of cauliflowers, floats of spinach, pineapple chunks, rangoon beans, strikes of tomatoes, drums of figs, drills of swedes, spherical potatoes, and tallies of iridescent kale, york and savoy, and trays of onions, pearls of the earth, and punnets of mushrooms, and custard marrows, and fat vetches, and beer and rape, and red, green, yellow, brown, russet, sweet, big, bitter, ripe, pomelated apples, and chips of strawberries, and sieves of gooseberries, pulpy and pelurious, and strawberries fit for princes, and raspberries from their canes. I dare him, says he, and I double dare him. Come out here, Gerrity, you notorious bloody Hillensdale robber. And by that way when the herds innumerable of bellwethers and flushed ewes, and shearling rams and lambs and stubble geese, and medium steers and roaring mares and polled calves, and long wools and store sheep and cuffs, prime springers and culls and sow pigs and bacon hogs and the various different varieties of highly distinguished swine, and Angus heifers and Polly bullocks of immaculate pedigree, together with prime, premiated milch cows and beeves. And there is ever heard a trampling, cackling, roaring, lowing, bleating, bellowing, rumbling, grunting, champing, chewing of sheep and pigs and heavy-hooved kine from pasture lands of Lusk and Rush and Carrick mines and from the streamy vales of Thomond. From McGillicuddy's reeks, the inaccessible and lordly Shannon, the unfathomable. And from the gentle declivities of the place of the race of Keir, their rudders distended with superabundance of milk, and butts of butter and rennets of cheese, and farmers' firkins, and targets of lamb, and crannocks of corn, and oblong eggs in great hundreds various in size, the agate with the dumb. So we turned into Barney Kiernan's, and there, sure enough, was the citizen up in the corner having a great confab with himself, and that bloody mangy mongrel Gary Owen, and he waiting for what the sky would drop in the way of drink. There he is, says I, in his glory hole, with his crew skiing lawn and his load of papers working for the cause. The bloody monger let a grouse out of him would give you the creeps. Be a corporal work of mercy if someone would take the life of that bloody dog. 
I'm told for the fact he ate a good part of the breeches off a constabulary man in Santry that came round one time with a blue paper about a licence. Stand and deliver, says he. That's all right, citizen, says Joe. Friends here. Pass, friends, says he. Then he rubs his hand in his eye and says he... What's your opinion of the times? Doing the rapparee and Rory of the Hill. But big up, Joe was equal to the occasion. I think the markets are on a rise, says he, sliding his hand down his fork. So big up, the citizen claps his paw on his knee and he says, Foreign wars is the cause of it. And says Joe, sticking his thumb in his pocket. It's the Russians wish to tyrannise. I give over your bloody cotton, Joe, says I. I would thirst on you, I wouldn't sell for half a crown. Give it a name, citizen, says Joe. Wine of the country, says he. What's yours? Says Joe. Ditto Mac and Aspie, says I. Three points, Terry. Says Joe. And how's the old heart?